Hey guys and welcome to the video. Today we're comparing these six games from a creativity perspective. Each of the games will let you mould the land, adding roads, rivers, towns, tracks, stations and most importantly the trains. And once set up, we'll let you ride on board the trains. In the video, we'll take a quick look at each game in turn, we'll take a look around the menus and then we'll build a simple oval discussing what I'm doing and how easy it is. At the end of the video, we'll return to this page and discuss the scores. So Trains 19, quickly go to settings, um, full key binding, lots of settings on here. This is a, a very mature game. You can pretty much change what you want on here. So now we're going to quickly look at one of my old routes. This uh, route's actually on the channel. Now what we're running is a session. Now what's a session? It's um, you create your map, the game calls it's a route, and then you create uh, you can have multiple sessions on the on a map. What a session does, it tells you can tell trains to do a certain thing. So you can either pro you can either program trains to move, or you can actually drive them yourself. So in this, we actually programmed it to move. I've got set cameras, I've placed manually here, and um, now it's just watching this train. The train goes round the turntable. Everything's automatic once I've programmed it. It's all doing it by itself. Now we can go inside if we want. I can take control of that train if I want. If I want to, I can just create a route, not have a session, and just put some trains on it and drive. Now that's what we're going to do later. So I'm heavily editing this because it's quite long and uh, we don't spend too much time on this. We're going to look at this train, then we'll look at a few others. So by the time we've done that, another one had arrived. And that one would go up to the top and run around. And actually, it won't go on the turntable, just run around. Heading down to the little village I created. Now this this route is called the simple route. You can download it from the train's uh, download station, and uh, you can actually watch the videos of it being made as well. All it is is a big circle with an X in the front, in the middle, sorry, and um, the little side you saw. It's very simple. That's why it's a simple route. Now assets, you can see there are some animated. There's, there's, a, there's a lot of assets. Most of them are, well, all these are free for starters. That's either inbuilt in the game or from the download station. So in theory, you could make a route just like this yourself. There's no reason you couldn't. This is a very old loco. Um, it doesn't have an interior, this one, but this is, this is one somebody made. It's not one inbuilt to the game. So I forgive it. I quite like it because it uh, gives you a clear screen of the front. You know what what's actually happening. It's the same. This is the same bit of the uh, near the town, heading the other way. We're on the other track on that train, heading into the station I built. But I think this route gives you an idea. Once again, you can actually ride on board. Some of them got, some of the trains have got really nice interiors. Some don't. It depends on if they're inbuilt part of the trains or if they're actually been made by someone and whether someone's actually gone to the time to actually put a nice interior or not in. Most have actually. Some trains can actually be controlled inside so you can actually control the knobs and things and actually control them but others you, you can't and you have to use the uh, the controls down the bottom. I was quite enjoying looking at this route actually. It's the first time I've looked at it in, the, in a year. so. This is the first thing I put on YouTube for trains. Right, now we're going to create something. We start off with a square. New route, whatever we're going to call a test. Yeah. One square, add a square. Boom, there, I've got two squares. Add a bit of land in the middle, raise it up. Now you'll see there's numbers. That's what I like about this game. You can choose how high you want it. Now we're going to choose a bit of track. Oh no, we're not. We're going to add some stations in. These aren't actually seen, but what they do is generate passengers. So these will go under platforms. So we just add the platforms in on top. 
what it allows you to do is have one invisible station, but uh, mul you can create multiple types of stations or make it look like many different things. Now these are the AGS ones I think I'm using here, but the, there are problems with them on the latest updates. Where that, when you're playing, you don't really want to see the one, the two, which are above, but you do. It doesn't go away. It's a pity. Maybe they'll fix it, maybe they won't. Who knows? Certainly when you're in play mode, that's always there. So now we're just adding some track to the station. And then we're going to add each of these in into the other station. Now we can re drag it and just choose the position of it want. Track laying, once you've grasped the basics, is really simple. Note how little space the menu takes to the right as well. When we look at EP, for instance, it takes the majority of the screen, which is a shame. It takes too much of the screen, the menus on that game. Now this route isn't going to be fantastic. I'm not putting a lot of effort into this. We can see there's one of the problems with this game, that different assets have different heights um, because they're made for different versions of the game. I've left it in, but uh, you'll see the part of the road there is much higher than the other part. That's a shame with this game. We're going to change the environment here. We're going to change the date. Well, those trees will actually have some growth on them. Now we're going to put some hedges in. Make some fields this side. So I'm not putting an awful lot of effort into this. Change the time of day. I like the idea of those long shadows. Now you can paint every square you want by just one click on there. It's fairly easy to do. Let me add a little bit of paint for the, uh, the tracks there. Ballast in and that whole whole road still there. And a few people in. You can see we move them up and down. What you can't do is angle things though. So we've got splines of fences and all kinds of things. So it's not just splines of track, so you can lengthen put them to the length that you want. Turn these bushes here. These are rather large bushes, and I put them a little bit too close to the, uh, the platform there. There we go, we're going to lower the land here, and we'll put some water in. You can see I put a minus one on there, because you can set the heights. I, I like that. I just wonder, if that, for instance, at EEP, if you can do that. I don't know I don't know if you can. You certainly can't with uh, Transport Fever. You know, I'm painting these rocks, trying to make it light rocks, and put some trees on top. It doesn't look fantastic, but you get the point of what it's doing. If you want to look at some nice building, go look at uh, my big build series. Now that's uh, range cut and takes lots and lots of time doing, unlike this. I have a whole series where I'm building a very vast, you know, a rather vast route on trains. Now these are splines of grass. You can actually also have um, moving grass, but uh, that takes a while to program in, so I'm not going to do that today. Right, so this is what it looks like what we just made. Click on it and you can actually then uh, look at it. You can't, there are keys which you can then just control it via. We can bring up the menu and control it. Or on some change, you can go inside the cockpit and actually control it. Done properly, this is the prettiest game out of them. 
but also the FPS is the lowest out of them. I can make 30 FPS on this game, so on all the others I can make 60. Train Simulator 21. Right, so the first thing we do is have a quick look at uh, a pre-made route. We quickly drive something. Now I've got it in easy mode. I'm sure there's a, another other modes than this, but that's probably the best I can do. The graphics are set as high as they can go. Um, this is the 64 bit, although I've played both and so my PC, I don't see any difference. Tractors have blades, you can see them, which is good. I don't get very far on this, as you're going to see in a second. This game plays at 60 FPS all day long. It's uh, no problem. Actually, one of the reasons I chose this route was there's a lot happening with this with the water is that snow sleep perhaps i want to see if it actually uh, slowed anything down no we are meant to stop here and well i i don't and yeah that was game over so we're gonna actually uh build a route is this one of those games you end up fighting um, you, if you use the scroll button on the mouse, you zoom in and zoom out, but that's not moving in and out to the map, it's zooming in and out. There's a difference. Actually, this was one of the problems I had. I couldn't work out to attach the trap back to each other. I fumble about for ages. You can see I've ended up, connect I keep connecting other bits up by accident. I take it apart and I put it together and I didn't I didn't really see a way of doing it but eventually I fumbled it together so you have to move it and it's probably one of the buttons at the bottom but at this point I hadn't quite worked out which one it was and I've messed up here now but the camera go back to the camera there is no rear key binding, um, so you're stuck with what it is, and it's the arrow keys to move about. Left is left, right is right. In theory, up is move forward and back is move back, but like Diesel Rail Car, Diesel Rail Car Simulator um, and a few others, if you're facing towards the ground and you press the up arrow, you go towards the ground, if you're, and that's really, really annoying. At this point, it's not in the video, I just quickly test it to make sure it's working. You need to associate yourself with the, with the train, effectively, otherwise you can't drive it, which I found out, it took me ages to work that out. But anyway, we uh, save, we go back to the route editor, we add a few extra bits in, because it's not fair to this game otherwise. We should uh, attempt to put some scenery on here. You can see I'm fighting the camera again, trying to get in a good location. Um, the insert and delete keys are up and are normally up and down. So if you're facing towards the horizon, you press that, you will go up and down. 
So if you're facing towards the land and you press it, you'll go forward. It's not intuitive at all, but y you would get it after a while. Um, what I would say on a positive is the the controls on the left and the bottom, they don't take all the screen. It's not like EEP, which uh, their idea is floating boxes, which just take 99% of the screen real estate. It's just not good, really. Um, this takes a small proportion. I don't like how it's stylized, but it, I know it says 21 on it, but it's an old game. So it's styled like an old game. What I'm really doing here now, I'm just playing with different, I'm seeing what different types of uh, the paints they have and what options you've got. So you can notice that's 32 there. We've got, that seems to be the size. One thing I haven't noticed or found is how to redirection the uh, the paint on here. So it's a bit like an EEP where everything's in one direction. You see everything's diagonal there on the paint. There's probably a way of doing it. I just don't know how to. So let's presume there is. Another thing, you also notice that arrow. So you have to, when you're placing something, you click on it and you turn, you move the mouse about, holding the mouse button down to get the arrow to go in the direction you want it to go. Um, that's a horrible idea. I would much prefer so using the middle mouse button and that, or, or the scroll button, scroll wheel to actually move that round, but no, you don't. You, you hold the button down to get the direction, let it go, and then you, you take it somewhere else, click the button again and I wanted to make some hedges, but I just I couldn't get to the feeling. I, I felt comfortable actually doing it. I think it's the, to stop it snapping. I think it's either shift or the control. I found that out later. I think it's the control you hold while you're actually doing it. Stop it snapping to something else. Now you notice here it doesn't. I couldn't move it round. I don't know why on earth there's two different tools, but you're not, you're not these circle things. You click on them and they, but there's, yeah, there's nothing in between. But there's another one. If you click on the bottom menu there, you, it seems you can, you have a, a refined control. I don't know why it has both. It doesn't need both. You'll see it in a minute when I find it. Because I can't get these to an angle I want them. That was frustrating me. But there is another tool right there, which I find and I then I put that right. I think I found it here. I was playing with this car. That ground, that tarmac for the station is slightly high and the, the car just goes into it, so I wanted to fix it. There we go, this is it. Now, this is a much better tool. This should be the default one as far as I can see. So I click on there, and look, you've got much more control of these houses now. The circle depends on the axis, it decides the axis you're actually trying to um, move that item to, the asset to. I was far happier once I found this. But the camera, I still felt I was, you know, as I'm moving left and right, I'm still moving in and out, and that's frustrating. So I think this is a repetitive thing on most of these games. Is If it doesn't feel right when you're just moving about, you won't enjoy it so much. And if they simply had the arrow key moving forward and back and not up and down every time, I would have felt a lot more comfortable. But there's no key rebinding on this game, so... To be honest, I couldn't even find a way out of here without pressing play, the, the big play button, to actually exit here. You have to press play, then you can press escape and escape. It's a bit of an oversight. There might be a way around it. Um, the trees are quite uh, quite nicely made. They seem to move. It's an old game engine. It's not going to be perfect. The track, as you can see, is not the highest. But things move about. People move about. Once I've worked out how to move things, and. It unlocked a few more options of what I could do within the game. Now, technically, you'd put more roads and things at the back here. I put a few more houses on. I just want to see what it would look like. 
You'd put a road in there, a few things. Right, so let's control the train. We'll have a look what it actually looks like in the normal sort of speed. It's quite obviously not meant to be a full route. It's just to look how easy it is to actually make it and what it actually looks like in the end. Remember, this is full graphics. And actually, one of the reasons why I uh, I show a route at the beginning is that it's, it's not fair to show you this present. This is the game when I've just made something really simple like this. So down the bottom, right hand side, you've got different camera angles you can put things on. There's the helicopter one and two, the internal. You've got this one, which is just places a some sort of camera. The train's quite nicely uh, created. It's quite nice. But the problem this game has, which I, I talk about at the end, is no free assets. Not really. There was a few websites you can go to, but... So you are limited to what you've got to play with, what DLCs you've bought. Um, I think if you put time and effort in, you, you could create something reasonably nice on it. The question is, in 2021, should this be the game you buy? And I'm not entirely sure. So I don't think they're going to update it. Not really, not give it a new game engine. But it does have a lot of... Uh, DLCs if you if you like that because it's been out a long time and it does run it should run on medium computers medium sort of computers yeah I don't have the highest settings computer I've got a GTX uh, 1080 and this runs easily at 60 look it says 153 <laughs> I've got it's not crashed, it's actually working at the moment. Top left. I don't think you're ever going to have any problem with FPS on this game. And that's a good place to leave this one. <laughs> that's always fun to have, isn't it? The ability to actually uh, crash your train. EP16. So the first we're going to do is load a layout. We're going to choose the demo. It's very easy to look at. First thing you'll see is here. I think it's a set camera position. You can move about. I think it's the control and arrow keys. Or you can right click your mouse and just drag it about as well, which I'm doing here, I believe. Um, you click on a train and then you can construct, start to control it. What I did there was shift clicked the uh, signal. Now this train on this board seemed to be programmed to go around in a circle. The other, there's another one there as well which should do the same thing. As long as you set the signals, it will start moving. So it moved to the next signal, then stop. Not this signal, not the next one. So it's slowly stopping, there's a signal just behind, and then I press, press stop again, and there you go. So you can watch from outside, there's the numerous cameras. You, I think you can set multiple set cameras as well. Um, or you can set uh, watch inside, or even drive inside. You can move the camera left or right. You do, you can access the controls from in here, you can move things. The same with this train here. We'll go inside. So the, it does look like you can control the train by moving things from within the train on the control panel. I haven't done that. I don't know if about this game to try to do that. I've done it from. Uh, I'm controlling it from uh, the external um, controls. What we're doing now is looking at. It's technically a train, but it's on a road, so it's a car. And what you'll notice there, once it comes off one side of the road, of the board, it goes back onto another side. I quite like the car there, how it went onto its... The way it went around the corner. Now we're going to change cars, we're going to get onto a truck. You can see, look at this drop down, they're the cars or trains, it's everything basically, everything controllable. 
Go on the click on the camera. The buttons to the right are the perspectives. You can click on choose different cameras, or you can click uh, the number keys. What we now do, go on to the controls. I've, by this point, I actually reg worked out. I would actually control the t uh, the truck, and we got it on full speed, 100%. Zero brake, pushing forward. It seems to have a set route, possibly. Now watch it crash into this. I like the fact that they bump. It's been programmed in that they will bump and then the car will brake. I quite like that. It's a nice little touch. Now we're going to attempt to make a little route. So we're going to make a circle and a station in and a little bit of scenery and a hill in the middle. So we're going to add the track in 3D. So we can drag it to the, how we want it, right click the track and then we get the little menu comes up, then you add to the track and do it again. There might be a button, a key to bring that menu up or to automatically extend it, I'm not sure. Now we're going to, uh, to go to 2D. I find it easier. You click on the track on the left hand side and then you click the add extension. When you add extension, that piece of track will be exactly the same as the piece you've added from. So if it's a corner, it'll be that same corner. Then you just change it to how you want it. You seem to have more control in 2D than you do 3D of how the track looks. Maybe that's just me, but it just seemed to be like that. And they clicked up OK. So we have a quick look around in 3D again. Right now, I don't know how to move track up and down properly. I can just about do it. Why not add a station in? So we move that out of the way, rotate it. Now, my, uh, you can see the, the circles there. You can actually angle things. I really like that. So we'll convert this into some points. Then we'll add this little bit of tracking. It's a little far down. I'm not sure it's meant to be there. So I remove it, I move it back. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. I don't know, there it is, it's in position anyway. And it gives a bit more space for this uh, siding here. The worst part is controlling the camera. I felt like I was fighting all the way through. Once you grasp the idea of how to add the uh, the rose and track, and basically it's those green things, you're, you're pulling that circle, you put your mouse on the green circle, you just drag it to where you want it. It's, it's, it, it won't extend infinitely, it only does extend to a certain point. This is a, a set piece, this doesn't extend, but it does fit. And unlike trains, they do seem to just fit together. So we're adding another couple of pieces in. There you go, so that was fairly easy. Now we're going to try and put it across the track. Now the one thing I noticed was the, uh, the road is too high for the... There doesn't seem to be a way just to lower the road from the middle, so you have to put... sort of angle it down and then angle it back up again using different splines. Um, I didn't do it very well. As you can see from these houses, you've got this, those circles around it. So you can spin them, you can move them up and down. Um, you can even angle them if you want to. Now we add a few houses in. I'm not going to bother putting walls and stuff like that. This is outside what we're going to do today, but You can see how they're added in. Then we add some hills. From this menu, you can also paint. If you shift click while you're doing this, it goes down. If you just click, it goes up. It took me a while to learn that. Painting, hmm. If there's a way to spin this tool around a bit, which I haven't found, it'd be better. What you'll see now is me fighting the camera to try and get into a position I could actually, you know, do something with. It doesn't feel natural. It never got to the point it felt natural. 
As long as you don't have to move too much, then you're fine when you're building. But as soon as you want to move, if if the, if the camera was better, I would I'd be moving around a lot more. But I end up keeping it into one place and just placing things, and that's solely because this camera's so awful. Now, one thing I do like, you can just on every all, all the uh, the assets such as the trees, the houses, the bushes, the whatever, you, you can click on them and you can make them bigger. So if you place a tree and they're exactly the same as each other, you can actually make them larger or smaller. Look, I just did it there. And you lower it down because it's in the ground, or not in the ground at the moment. That's a nice touch. So we're shift clicking this tool now, and then we're going to add uh, some water I found in. Where was it? In Terra? Yeah, Terra Water. So I put a few in, I think, how do I do this then? So I put one, you end up putting one in and just expanding it. It's very obvious really, isn't it? Then you can move it up as far as possible. Now I don't know what control you've got of what position, if there's a, a way to set that. I want it one pixel down from the, you know, zero or something. But you see what I mean about the, uh, the painting? It's all in one go, it's like it's one, where well, if there's a way to move that round, so it's not so uniformed, maybe that would be better. Everything's in a row, which I don't like. Anyway, flatten the land. There's a flatten tool, you can see. Then with, there is a gradient tool, a little bit like um, Transport Fever as well, which I use afterwards, so it doesn't look so uniformed as well. These actually move. Now, you see them changing color. I don't know if that's because they automatically choose something different each time I don't know or for you can maybe you can configure it to be a specific one now I don't bother lowering those trees so they are floating now one thing it started doing look see it went to the wrong angle there I don't know if that's a glitch or something I pressed but whenever it got near something else it just started glitching out on me you can know every one of them was doing it but I was placing another extra couple of houses off camera when it did it. One of these people initially did it as well. I did it off camera. It just, they just completely went sideways. Again, don't know if it's a glitch or if it's just something I did. See the tree to the right? That was the same tree as the one on the left, but they're different sizes now because I made it larger. Did that off camera. All right, the last thing we're gonna do is place the train. Side on a small train, it's a small layout. So there we go. Um, I'm sure if we spent more time on it, we can make it look nicer, but you, but you can also see the assets, the quality of them aren't, you know, fantastic. That station, it's very low poly and I, I think there's only a couple of stations. Now, the way I'm controlling this train is using that regulator there. There's a drop down menu just above says vehicle. If you have, the more vehicles you've got, the more, the more things will be on there. You just choose what you want. Two down, there's a button with the cameras. You can choose what cameras you want from there, or you can just click on the item. I do like the, uh, the animations for the, uh, the cows and stuff. You can obviously go inside. You saw that earlier. I just left it outside on the, right now. I figured you'd get a better view of the graphics that way. The track you see doesn't have, it's very low poly. Um, the, the points don't have any blades, for instance. My trees are really off the ground. Floating trees is a new thing. Graphically, it's, it's middle of the road, but you can play it on lower end computers because of that. These are the waters, it's okay. It's not fantastic, but it kind of looks like water, static water. You'll see the frame at the top, it says 59, but I put the external uh, monitor on it, it's 120 on that, so. Problem is that crashes the game, so I can't actually put that on. It lasted 30 seconds. Loco. Now the first thing we're going to do is even the land out. Because if the land is above what you're placing, it's hidden. 
so the trap will become hidden. I call it a bug, they call it a feature. Hmm. So we're going to have two little stations. What you can see you do, you place the item down, and you've got these little white um, dots in between, and then it connects up. The problem with the corners is that the connections are very, very tight on these automatic uh, connections. Now, since making this game, you'll see on the left-hand side, there is one corner radius. I think we do use that somewhere. That's too tight as well. That's the same radius as the, the rest of these when it's automatically made, when the radius is autom automatically made. Um, yeah, they have actually released a new radius piece or two new radius pieces, which are slightly better, but that doesn't fix the uh, the automatically placed track, or it doesn't fix the radius, the radi <laughs> the radiance, yeah, radiance, whatever, of the um, of the what, the points. Yes, I know what I'm talking about. So that's the problem with this. Um, accessibility. This is really easy though to put, put track down. This is probably the easiest game to actually put track down and stuff. Now what you'll see again is that every time you play something, it lowers it. Because they haven't got any heights on this game at the moment. So if you place any item down, it will then lower it down, the, the, the heel down. That's a shame. For instance, another thing is you can't hire any item up yet. So, yeah. You can't actually raise anything at the moment. Um, there's also no roads at the moment. So we're going to place the little town down, but there are no roads for this. The signals you can place, and if you click them once they're placed, they go up and down, but they're not actually functional. Maybe in the future? Um, when I recorded this, you'll notice the graphics has this kind of bloom on it. And you can now right-click, go into settings. There is a kind of little settings now, which you can change the look of it slightly, make it night, day, make it more a dull day if you want to, stuff like that. So that's now been added in. You can see though, it's got potential. It looks quite nice. I, it's just got lots of problems at the moment. Now once, one thing to note that because the way you pull out like this, you actually press one to one to nine. One is would be inside a vehicle if you're driving. Two is the closest we're at now. And then you right click or middle click and then move your mouse about to actually move about. Um, if you keep it out above quite a lot, you can play on really low hardware, which is quite nice. So here we go, we've actually made something now, pretty much. So I think we're gonna put one more train in, I think. Now we have to join all these together. Hopefully they remain together, but honestly they don't. Because the corners are too the radius of the corners is too sharp, it pulls the train apart. Now, what you'll see is a little line there, because since I did the, uh, the first look at this, you, got now, you can now put multiple trains on there. There's a little button to the bottom left-hand side of the throttle. That changes which train you're controlling. Only one train at a time will move. So if you move on to a different train, the train you are controlling right now will then stop. And that line will tell you where which train you're actually controlling. As you can see, you can go inside. You can't control anything inside, but you can look inside at least. It's a pretty game, but it's a limited game right now. It's got, a, it just has, we can hope that a lot more will be added in the future. Now, at this point, everything's come apart because it's gone around a corner and it's just gone boom. You can see that they're all moved off on themselves. And that's purely because the radius of one of those automatically joined pieces of track was too tight.
I am quite. We we'll click on that. Okay, yeah, that's it. Now we got it. Now push forward. I can see the front wheels off the track, so that happens quite a lot. This is a game for the future. It's not worth the money it's being charged right now. It might be in the future. Let's hope. I'll keep watching this. There'll be some more stuff on this game on the channel um, when they bring more out. I've wanted to do more stuff on this because the first video was uh, very well received, but they just haven't moved forward enough on it. Multiple trains is a welcome feature, though. I think that's a good feature. Diesel Rail Car Simulator. Now, the first one we're going to do is uh, drive a track. So we're going to find a route. So at the moment, I'm just looking uh, through the options here. Generally, for videos, you'd choose something under 25 minutes, but we're just going to do a a small cut of this anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So that's where we drive, and uh, that's where we're going. Uh, this is set full um, settings, so full scenery settings. As you can see, the controls at the bottom pretty much tells you what to do. You can uh, re-key bind everything, and the game does realise what you've changed it to, which is good. Now everything on the screen at the bottom, you can switch off and on, so it says grey, target, keypad, uh, the, the box on the right. I'll show you that in a second, um, but the less things you have on, the better score you can have. So you're obviously by driving a route, you are you're scored on things. For instance, do you go over the speed? Do you go under speed? Do you use too much throttle? And uh, the more helpers you've got on, the less perfect score you can have. Now, it used to be on the old version of this game, um, you choose that right at the beginning where we chose the, what route we're going to do, but now we actually go into it here. You can see the little tick boxes at the, on each of them. And the less you untick, the less you have. Or the more you untick, the less you have. Um, as I said, we're running at full graphical settings. It runs at 60 FPS. Um, there's no issues running this game at all. With all the helpers on, even I can actually play this game. So you've got all the cameras all the other sort of games have. The externals the internals and you can uh, click on a different carriage and it will does it goes to that carriage Quite a nice aesthetic. The graphics aren't particularly great, but it's it's quite pleasing to the eye. It's got a bit of bloom there, I suppose. If you don't know about this game, it's set in the 1960s, a fictional setting. Um, it's got numerous maps. Um, it now allows for users to create their own maps, which which while we're going to we're going to look at very shortly. You can submit them to the uh, workshops. You can actually download um, maps from other people now. 
and you can uh, what train to call session you, this game would call timetable you can actually create timetables I find that bit of the game quite hard to do as you're gonna see right this is my score you see the tutorial penalty is minus 33% so you can't get a top score on this because you've got them on You can see the graph at the top, um, which your speed and the limits. So I've gone over in a few places, well under a few others. So it's underscored me for that as well. Right, now we're going to build a route. This bit's fairly simple. You right click and it tells you uh, what you want to do. All we're going to do is this. Now the eight and the nine keys go between the uh, 3D and the 2D. It's probably easier creating the, the basic track on 2D. Yeah, this didn't work, did it? No. Unlike most of the other games where you uh, place individual things down, you, you zone them. You'll see this in a second for the houses. You'll, you zone where you want them to be and then they will just be placed. You can raise the track, lower the track, um, create sidings. You can see the walls, everything's pre-built. What we're doing here is zoning a stopping point, I believe, on the platform, so it knows that this is a station. Let's signal in. We didn't run it on train, so I don't think it's really necessary. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just playing with it, really. With the signals here, certainly. The camera is a bit annoying. You, can, it runs. The controls run on the same as the main driving does. So whatever you've keybinded for that will keybind here. What's a little bit annoying is when you. I've set to arrows to forward, back, and whatever, but if you're aiming downwards and you press the forward arrow, you go towards the land as well. Um, there is an up and down, which I've, set, I've done for, a, I've set to insert and delete, which can take you up and down. So, but there's no way to stay at the same height. I and mean, that's, that's difficult for building. So you, you do feel like you're, you're fighting the controls a little bit. I've noticed that in a few games, which are, which we're playing on on this video, that they do the same thing. I, d I don't really understand why you'd do that, because you, you can see. Like, actually, you're start, what I'm doing here is zoning something, and it becomes trees and different things, or hills in this case. Now, interestingly, to move actually. Even though I've said it not to, I have to right click the mouse and actually then move, press the movement keys. If you don't right click the mouse, you don't move. Now, right click in the mouse, if you right click on something that, are, that asks you, do you want to interact with that object? So mm, I'm not sure if the two work out very well. So if you have something, an area which is highly populated with things and you want to move, you right click, it's not great. Right, this is the bit I found really difficult. Right, so we've saved the route now. We're trying to create the timetable, because otherwise you can't run a train. So I was trying to link this together. I thought it'd be it, but no, I, I end up playing with this for ages and I still don't quite understand what I did to get it, to get it working. But you have to create a timetable before you can run a train on the route you just, on the map you just made. Now the first thing I do, you'll notice, I forget to add a train. We finally get this working. I'm showing you this because this confused, really confused me. Well, as you can see, I added those two in, the carriages here, the MK1s. I think it's MK1. And I was wondering at this point, what have I done? Why am I sitting in the carriage? 
It's because I didn't add an engine. I put that rightly, so it was fairly simple in the end, but here we go, we ended up using the same engine. Now once you've done it, you can just play on it play on your new map. You can you don't have to keep to the timetable if you don't want to, you just play on it. But uh, you have to go through that stage in order to be able to drive anything. Um my thoughts are this is an add-on to the game rather than this would be the game. Unlike, for instance, like trains or transport fever, when you're, the enjoyment is building something and then running it. This, for me, is always just going to be a driving simulator. And this is an add-on. I'm pretty sure you could get fairly good at it if you practice, but I don't feel that I want to not grabbed me but for driving simulator it's bang on it really is the last thing you can do you'll notice there's a number of engines here you can actually edit them now I have no idea how to do this again um, but there's a video on the on this on their scene page of someone morphing one engine into a completely different engine by by using these settings by completely changing them. All I've done, all I do here is change the colour of some of the bodywork. There you go. One's red, one's green now. Transport Fever 2. First, let's take a look at an area of a map I've pre-detailed to show how good Transport Fever 2 can look. Next, let's go into a free game. Uh, generate a map. Enable a few mods. And click go. Now once we're in, we'll have a quick look at the menu. As you can see, we've got uh, full key controls. Key, read key bind anything you want. Now what we're going to do is set up two stations, one at one town, one at another, and just put a train in between. Now, you are able to um, raise land, lower land, place cities where you want, um, place houses where, well, as long as you've got the mod on, you can plop uh, houses down wherever you want. You can see track laying is really simple here. Just drag it, choose the bridge you want over the top there. Do you see how easy this is? Put an X in there, signal it. Now you can move roads, you can add roads. Now we'll create a line, one town to the other. As you can see the red marker now shows the lines there. Yeah, follow the signals. We're putting a train depot. Make sure we can get to the correct track. Double slip that uh, junction there. Now, one thing I have done is put them on with stations, but you know, we'll put a passenger train on and they are cargo stations, but I'll change those in a sec. So we've got some Mark 1s uh, going on. And there you go, there's our first engine. See how easy that is to get something to work.
Now, FPS on this game. Now, this will really depend on how big your map is and how big the towns become. At the beginning, it'd be easy 60 FPS. But as you... Yeah, you're not going to like that, probably, flipping around. But, you know, that's life. And uh, the cab here isn't particularly detailed. But you can ride on board. And you can ride in a carriage if you want. But it's more fun to ride along that outside and watch. This game looks really good. See? This is it's possibly out of all the games the quickest way of actually getting started. Now the game allows you to play with money or you don't or you can play completely uh in sandbox mode like we're doing here. We're gonna remove that platform. Put some more tracking, so I don't put the wrong station in completely. It allows you to see our stations built. You can build a station however you want, really. The more mods you got, the more stations you can have, more staging types. Same with tracks, different track types and things. There's uh, 3,000, over 3,000 mods for this game now. Now, we're actually walking, we're walking with her, so we're seeing exactly what she does. This game's fantastic because... You can watch a person go from their house, go to go and get a bus to the train station, follow them, get on the train, go to the other end. It's you, you can follow them all the way to work or wherever to where they want to go. Kind of inside the car, you get the idea. A little bit more building. I, I, I raise the hill here. I was going to mess around with paint, but I really want to show you, you can paint anything you want. There's lots of painting here. Uh, if you paint grass, there's different types of grass, and they're actually grass blades. So there's actually texture. Now, I remove these. These look good, but they are actually roads. So it's modern these in, but there are, and then uh, the AIs automatically want to join a road to it. But there are other types of fences which aren't roads. So we'll add those in shortly. Uh, so there's a little working crane. You put it on, it moves around. It's quite nice. There's a person on it. Little building to put at the end of your station. Plop down. Signal box. There are a lot of assets which you could play with. You don't need to play this as a as a tycoon game. You can just play in sandbox mode and just watch the trains go by. You can see from the grass, it's got texture. In a minute, we will find a, there we go. There's a fence of a kind. It's possible just to spend hours decorating it. And behind here, it needs wool, doesn't it? Of course it does. There's car parks, different cars you can put in the car parks. There's a, the gates for this, I haven't got the mod for the uh, the gates, but there's a, there's a British old British gates mod for the uh, crossings there. I did have a look, but I, I didn't notice it. I, I hadn't actually installed it. Different hedges you got. So you can make fields and things, make it look nice, like farms and things like that. This is a very good looking game. Now, you'll notice the traffic's on the right. There is a mod to actually... Well, obviously, to put everything on the left. I forgot to install it. But yes, you can have it running on the left if you like. I believe there are two mods to do that, separate ones. I 
That was a bit abrupt. I think that's my video editing. The little hill I put on the left, the hedges. The one on the right is much more natural, isn't it? I think I prefer that one. Essentially, there you go. It's a very easy game to get started with. Trains 19. Mm, right, okay, so it's 49 99 For that, you get six routes. These are six routes which you can drive. These are six maps you can drive. And within those, you've got a number of sessions, things you can do within that. Um, the prices, obviously, as I put on the graph, they are correct of January 2021. But we're not looking at it from that perspective. We're looking at it from a creator's perspective. So, free add-ons. These are add-ons you can actually download, made by other users, generally, and you can add to your game. Why is it only a three out of five? There's quite a few add-ons, but the problem is a lot of them are really old. Um, some of the roads float and the cars push into the roads, for instance. Um, the game doesn't handle version numbers very well. Example, um, one of the add-ons I've got has got three versions in the game. If you can check on the download station, three versions, but my game says it's 15. Now, if I was to provide that route for someone else to download, they wouldn't be able to download it because the game doesn't understand. That would try and look at for version 15 of that asset where there's only three. And uh, right now I'm having a massive problem with that, externally trying to fix it. But And the last reason why it's only a three is that you have to pay a fee to access the download station. You can technically use it for free, but the download speed is so slow and you have a, a limit per month what you can use. It's just not worth it. So you, you have to pay on top of the £50 a, a, a fee to access it. It's either done per day, per week, per month, per year. Um, you get bigger discounts the longer you actually uh, download. Paid add-ons. Again, these are things you can use with the game. I'm not scoring this. You either have them or you don't. You do. Long-term enjoyment. I say a four because you can build endlessly. The maps, they are little squares. And you can add another square on if you wish. And as many squares as you want, you just keep adding to your route. You can add more routes. And when you start to learn how to program the trains as well, that's something completely in, different in because you could drive one train and have other trains going different, doing different things and passing you and doing other things. You program them to do that. And it's a buzz to make that work. Easy to get started. Three. Laying some track down is fairly easy, to be honest with you. But understanding how to actually uh, manipulate it and get the best from it. And uh, what a spline is, for instance. That will take time. Again, that comes down to long-term enjoyment. Because you will learn more about the game the, the, the longer you play it. Graphics. Um, five. If we were to compare it against a different game, let's say Train Sim World 2. Um, yeah, let's say we just put it as a driving game. It wouldn't get a five. But in, in the list we have here of, um, of this type of game, then it, it is the, graphically the best. Scenery moves. There's a... There's a lot of value in the graphics there. It's not optimized, there's quite a few problems with it, but uh, graphically it still looks the nicest. Value, three. Why three? It's 50 quid for starters. And then you have to pay on top to download the uh, assets. Yeah, so that gives you a total score of 18. If you look on the list, it's still the second highest, but it, even though I play it the most, it's not the best overall game. Right, so Train Simulator. Now each year they bring out a new version of this, but to be honest with you, it's not really a new version, is it? It's a few little add-ons and fixes and things, but the game engine is quite old because the team has moved on to Train Sim World and Train Sim World 2. I, I don't think they're gonna be bringing out a major update for this game. So we move all the way across to graphics, it's a three because it's an old game engine. It's not its fault, it's just been out for a long time. It's £25, and for that you get the game and three add-on routes. Um, 
to be honest, because the game's been out, it's got a lot of external routes you can buy. But again, you have to buy these things. There's not a lot of free assets out there. So let's go on to free assets, free add-ons. It's got a one. Now I went, you cannot download free assets from the game that I can see. There's no there's no mechanism within the game to download free assets. So you, But you can go to external websites and download. If you go to Steam and go onto the forums, you can find links. There are links to external websites. And if, I suppose if you could Google them, you can find them. But if we compare it to Trains 19, for instance, where there's a everything, you can download externally if you wish to, because there's quite a few Trains 19 websites there which do uh, mods, but that's the only place you can really find train simulators. It's harder to import them and there's less of them. That means you have to pay for routes to get the assets and I, I don't like that. So again, we can move on to paid assets. Yes, it has some. We're not scoring that. This is yes or no. Long term enjoyment, I've gone two. Why? Because it's an old game and I find it quite, quite frustrating that there aren't more free assets for it and without a lot of free assets you're limited to what you can do and I'm, I just don't feel compelled to buy the roots or asset packs just to play this game it doesn't it doesn't push me enough so for me certainly long time enjoyment is two I've, I've done the review I've messed about with it and that's as far as I'm going to go with it easy to get started I found it's a two why? Well, you've seen in the video that uh, yes, you can build the route, you can then drive it, but you have to press some buttons. It's not as simple as Trains 19, for instance. Graphics are three. We've discussed this. It's an old game engine. It's not going to be fantastic graphics. It's okay. Value for me, too, because the lack of content within, you know, within the creativity sort of uh, version the creativity perspective of this game so it's got a total score of 10 EP 16 27 79 but on sales you can get a little cheaper and that's what I did when I bought it free add-ons um, there are some on the website I can't find you can either download within the game or from the website I suppose if you log in it's difficult to find the free add-ons, to be honest with you, from within the game, because there's no filter. If it's an if it's an add-on, it just goes, go to the page, buy, and then, yeah. It's, it's a letdown, that. Most of the assets are German-based. Um, I couldn't find any, for instance, UK signals. Again, we've mentioned that in the video. It's limiting for the game, I think. If there was more free stuff, but I think it's this, it's this horrible circle, a lot of these games, that you need more users to play it in order to make the assets, to want to make the assets. So um, it's a vicious circle. Paid add-ons, yes. 99% of it's free. Uh, it is uh, paid, sorry. Long-term enjoyment. To be honest, if I'd have found this game and not found the others, I would probably have spent the time learning how to play it a little bit more. Um, it gets a three, it's sort of middle on the road sort of score for, for a long term. Easy to get started, it is not though. It's a one. It took me four or five different attempts and at that point, because you're not... You, you haven't got into the game at all at that point. You're thinking, oh, can I be bothered? But if you, if you can actually push yourself to get past that, the initial sort of uh, difficulty and just just keep playing with it and having a go, then you will you actually start to learn it and it'll start, it'll start feeling better. But all the way through, I felt I was fighting the controls and that, that feeling never left me. It just didn't feel intuitive at any point. You can't change the, uh, the keys at all. So... You are, whatever they programmed in is what you've got. Graphics, um, it's a three. It's not Trains 19, which is a shame because it's come out at the same time. But I think it's a, an older game engine which they've just updated in a similar manner to tra uh, Train Simulator has. Um, 
it needs a new game engine. Simple as that. Um, value, three. It's middle of the road again. I can see me having a little play at it, but um, it would never be my go-to game. So it's 12. Loco. 1549. Is it worth that amount of money? No. No, it isn't. If you look at the, it, you know, Diesel Railcar Simulator, there's so much more stuff than it. And it's only £14. Um, £10 maybe? Not 15 Not nearly, you know, nearly 16 Um, yes. Free add-ons, not the moment. Maybe in the future, who knows. Paid add-ons, no. It's very early access. Long-term enjoyment, too. But easy to get started, five. You see, those two things are actually quite linked. Because the game is so bare bones, it's very easy to learn. But the problem is, because it's so bare bones, you'll get bored of it quite easily. And at the moment, you can only save one, save one map at a time. So you can't just save something and then go off and try something else. It is what it is. You've got it there, and if you want to keep that, you'll keep it. If you want to start again, you start again. Um, yes. Graphics, I've said three, it's middle of the road. A lot of people like the bloom. Um, since I recorded the video, you can actually change what the graphics, uh, the settings, the, you can make it like cold, dark. You can make it, you have the bloom if you want as it is now, but, so you can actually physically change it. So you added that in. Um, yes, it's not. It's still not quite there yet. The, the the locos themselves, they're not quite there. The assets, some are obviously imported from... Um, they've purchased them in, basically. It, it, the way it looks like to me. Some of the houses and some of the other bits. Everything moves, which is quite nice. Where some other games, they don't. Value for money, right now, is too expensive. Simple as that. For what it is, it's too expensive. They obviously feel that it's worth that, but it might be in the future. And let's hope, but not right now. So it's a 12. Diesel Railcar Simulator is a little hidden gem. It's 14 pound. Now I put a one for free add-ons because you can, as you saw in the video, you can play with engines. And and if you look at, I'll, I'll link this into the description. They have a video with it. They morph one engine into another one completely. And that's what you can do. You can save those settings and upload those to Steam. And that is your add-ons right now. Maybe that'll change in the future. Maybe we'll actually import assets and things. But right now you can't. So it's just a one. But don't think of that as a negative. Um, this, is, this is still an early, uh, early access, this game. And it's got so much when you think of it just in early access. Paid add-ons, no. Who knows in the future? Long-term enjoyment, up at three. Um, to be honest, this is a driving simulator. They've added in the other things, but this is purely a driving simulator for me. It's, it works best as that. Um, if you like that, this number will go up a lot higher. Um, for me, I like the creativity, and for the creativity side, it's poor. Um, you can do everything, but it's very difficult which goes along to the easy to get started. It's not easy to get started. I, said, I think there's a manual. I didn't look. I don't look on any of these things. I, I The enjoyment I get from games is um, just learning how to play it. And actually, once I've learned, I get bored with it. So mm, if I continue playing after I've learned how to do it, then there's a game which actually got something. And this game, actually, I have come back quite a few times and played, just not not always on videos, just to play, which is, uh, that, that does stand well for this game. Graphics are a three. Um, it's not as sharp as, for instance, Trains 19. It's better than Train Simulator. It's different to EP and Loco. Um, yes, well, I can't really say more than that. You've looked at yourselves. Value is a five. They put a lot, lot of effort into this game. Um, so total is 14. And finally, we've got Transport Fever 2. Now, if it wasn't for this game, I would have probably titled the uh, video Games You Can Create the Route and Then Drive. But 
I needed to add this game in because it's so important. £32 is a lot of money, but it doesn't sell quite often. And it has three, over 3,000 mods. So people love this game. And people are always creating really nice engines, really nice assets. The, the only reason it's a four for me is that if an asset gets removed from Steam, it gets removed from your game. If it gets removed from your game, you're told to remove it before you load the game. If you've used it within that game and you try and remove it, that game will not load any longer. That's a problem. Um, I would love there to be more UK based um, houses and things like that to go with the UK based engines. There's thousands of them, but that's what the modders are interested in is the engines, they're not interested in the houses and the, the external scenery. I think everything can be modded in. So if someone wanted to make it a UK terrace or a UK semi detached house, I'm pretty sure they could. If I knew how, certainly I would. Um, but the only reason it's got marked down, literally, is that is the fact that it can end your game. You're happily playing it, and then for some reason that mod gets removed, and then your game is stuffed, and then you have to start again. Paid add-ons, it doesn't have. They said on a transfer review two, they probably will have them. Long-term enjoyment four. Yes, four. I, I think it's above average. I think you will enjoy it. I think you're continuing to enjoy it. You can play an unmodded game. You can play it as a, a tycoon type game. You can play it with no money if you want and just join everything together and enjoy watching. It is so many things you can do with this game. I've heard so many people tell me that this is an arcade. It really is not an arcade game. This is a transport simulation. Easy to get started. I think it's pretty easy. Um, you can lose money qu quite quickly, but who cares? Because then you just start again. Or you can just not use any money. Um, placing tracks is very easy. This is the... This and Loco is the fastest games you can place track on, probably. Graphics are four. What disappointed me about the graphics was it came out a year after Trains 19. But everything seems so static. All the bushes, the trees. Now, that's the decision they made. Um, so it'll play on low-ended stuff, but what I would have asked for is, okay, the low-ended stuff, then have it static, but on the high-end stuff, have it all moving, because it feels more vibrant when everything moves. Value, 4 out of 5. I think it's a great game. I think everybody should own it. And that's why the total score is 19, the highest out of um, out of the games we've got here. Overall, it's just simply the best game here. Um... It's very close between and trains. Even with the trains, there's problems, and there's quite a few of them. Graphically, Trains 19 is better, but just tra trans Transport Fever is just Transport Fever 2. Sorry, it's just a better game. Well, guys, that is it. Thank you very much for watching. I do hope you uh, like the video, even if you disagree with what I'm saying. And if you do, feel free to actually say on the uh, comments, and uh, maybe I'll get back to you. Maybe I'll agree or disagree. And Maybe you think there's other games should have been in there because, uh, well, there are some other games such as Rolling Line or even Train Frontier Classic. Yes, that's a game which could have been on here. But uh, yes, I've got written reviews of those. So you can go and look at those if you like. But anyway, this one, thank you very much for watching. Cheers, guys. See you next time. Bye bye.